Okay, cool. There we go. Hey, there's Christian. Yeah. Are there three of us using the KWCC login? Is that Jay who, who's jumped in also? Uh, um, and Janae, Janae, and I can log out and get back in as myself. No, I don't care. Oh, that's Janae that's using it. Cool. I was just curious who the third was. I don't know if JP jumped on with us. Oh, so does everyone get this meeting is being recorded so you can continue to stay on or leave the meeting? Huh. Yeah. That's funny. Hi, Tony, Jessica, and Nice to see you all. So, uh, Terry's link says it's invalid. Yeah, you. I had to like copy just the code at the end to input it when I logged in. It, you couldn't click and have it work. Diana's having issue too. Yeah, Stacy and Janae, uh, at some point today, I want to like chat real quick about Zoom meetings and yes. make a better way yep. we can be doing it. I so, was just going to, okay, hold I on. I clicked on through the Facebook link and it worked fine. Yeah. But reusing the same code for multiple meetings is probably part of the reason why people are having issues. Well, two things on that is that it's because there's a lot. And so it seems as though some people have um, difficulty keeping it straight. So Paul, did you just send it all to everyone? OK. Yeah, just on the, just on the ALC group. Okay, I just resent out the email for whatever reason that join now email I sent uh, the link wasn't working and I got a lot of replies. So um, I just resent it out. Hopefully people can join now. Sorry about that, guys. That was my bad. Well, so I a think a couple minutes. Yeah, if we jump on uh, 105, I'll start. I'll start conversation about mindset. Um, and that'll give us some time to get into the uh, content on the tech stuff too. Okay, I just Sent it to, there's Terry. Terry got it in or back That's a gorgeous background you have. I love it. I don't know if she heard me. Were you talking to me? Yes. Oh, I didn't, it, like the audio clicked on, so I didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's better than my plain wall. Oh, uh, yeah, you should see what's behind me. I'm in my garage, and I have, like, two by fours and plywood stacked up behind me. Nice. <laughs> I love that we can do this and, and hide our real backgrounds. Yeah. KW released some really cool virtual backgrounds, too, that I put on the KW Central Coast Facebook group. I'll have to look at those. Nice. So those of you that haven't looked yet, if you search through the feed, I posted them, and there's, like, there's branded and unbranded ones. Um, so... Um, I think Ashley Blair, when she was on last time, had one of the backgrounds. It was really nice. It's good. Okay. Cool. All right. Everybody, as everybody knows, there are some issues with the links, so we're giving people some time to jump on here. Starting a little late. Um, all right, so it's 105. I'm going to start start us off with mindset. So one of the first things with conversation with the conversation that we want to uh, talk about is mindset. We all know in real estate and just in life, mindset's a big deal, right? Would you all agree? Take your head, yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. So um, how are you all handling your mindset this last week since we spoke last? How how's your guys' mindset been? I'd say it's good today. I'm, I'm having a day. Uh, I know we're all going to have a day or a couple of days during this ordeal, uh, but I'm here and I'm happy to see you all. We're happy to see Aww. you too, Terry. <laughs> we're happy to see you too, Terry. Thank you. I had an escrow yesterday, last night, and it, you know, it, you just, you, you don't like those, especially during this entire ordeal. So, uh, <sighs> that's hard. You know what? The two shall pass. Yes. And yes. there are some easy ones and there are some hard ones. And we earn our money on some of them and some of them. Yes. Yeah. You know, just I'll go. Some <clears throat> so, Paul. There, friend. Hang in there. Oh, sorry. You, you froze there for a sec. Sorry. Who froze? Krista's jumping Maybe in. There. I just said, hang, hang, I just said, hang in there, friend. That's all. Okay. 
All right. So Paul, um, on in your business, how have you seen uh, the mindset, not just our mindset, but our clients' mindset affect your business right now? Well, I'm with Terry. Um, I, had a, I had a deal canceled this morning as well. Um, and I think, you know, what we're doing is we're trying to find the positive solutions out of everything and what's best for the client and what we can do to get them back in a, you know, home buying position shortly. Um, she was a dental hygienist who was currently having a three week delay of work. And the bank said, if you're not working full time, see you later. Oh. So, you know, we had to deal with that. And, you know, she was really bummed because it closes in a week. But we talked about all the positive ah. things that we could do. Um, and all the different ways to look at it in a different mindset and that we'll get back together and, you know, get her back into something, um, you know, by the end of the year. And so uh, the banking restrictions have continued to tighten up. And so we're just trying to play within the parameters of what we can and keep, you know, um, again, it's, it, it just comes back to what's best for the client. And her goal is that they open up the, the dentist place in three weeks, but they're not even for sure that's going to happen. So. You know, wow. we, don't know. we don't know what's going to happen. And so for us, it was just, I'm sure Terry had the same conversations where, you know, it's like, we're all here to support the client and what's best for everybody. And, um, you know, on our end, it kind of takes some of the stuff out of, out of our hands. And so we just have to do what we can to, to be there and help and support and go from there. But my mindset continues to be really positive and um, doing what we can with who we can and being available and communicating and, um, you know, having these conversations with everybody on here, I think helps all of us also. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of where we're at right now. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate, I appreciate you, appreciate you guys being real with us about it. And, um, I think that when we're dealing with our clients, it's really important on the mindset topic to be real with them. Um, I think, I saw on Facebook uh, recently, uh, one of the local agents was posting online and was being very positive. Like I was actually impressed with how positive they were about all this. And they kind of got roasted by some of the non-realtors saying, well, of course a realtor is going to say that they're, you know, they're trying to get people to do business and all that. And then they came in with a really negative attitude. And it, it's interesting how when we can be on one side and we're super positive, almost to the point where it doesn't seem realistic, then the opposite side is going to come in and try to pull us down. So number one, we can't let them do that. And two, if we're real with them and say, here, acknowledge, you know, this is where we are and here is how we get through it as opposed to I'm, you know, turning my back to what reality is and I'm just going to pretend like I'm in la la land. Would, would you agree with that? Uh, Bobby? Yeah. Yes, I'd like to hear what kind of things you guys are doing when, like Terry, when that, when you get that email, when you see the call that the escrow has, well, you know, fallen through, what are you, how are you shifting your thinking? Like, are there a few key points you can share with us that like, well, you I opened a bottle of wine, the <laughs> <laughs> <Hi>, girl, <laughs> um, and then, you know, today, like, I'm not going to, it is what it is, right? Like, I don't have commission breath and I'm not going to, um, you know, sell them on like why they need to do this because you know, it, it's not in their cards right now. So mm -hmm. I just got to keep moving forward onward and upward. And there's somebody else around the corner. Um, normally what I do is I I'm upset for a little bit and I go through it, I process it and then I'm, I'm back to work and, you know, having conversations, doing something productive. Um, I kind of like what you touched on though, Scott, like how you said, you know, you don't want to have your back towards, uh, you know, just be in la la land. And I'm learning that during this experience, most of the time I'm extremely positive and I, going through this right now, I'm acknowledging, Hey, this freaking sucks. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to acknowledge that it sucks. However, what can I do to make this better? So I'm teaching a class today. So that helps me, you know, uh, make things better and take my mind off of it. Probably going to go scooter, go around the, the block and go on my scooter. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. I love that's that. That's awesome. <laughs> I had one fall apart last week and I'm an emotional eater and I drove straight to Sweet Pea Bakery because I needed some Sweet Pea cupcakes. <laughs> and I, 
I hadn't had a cupcake in God knows how long, but I just imagined just biting into a big chocolate cupcake and just like that would totally solve my problem. Well, I got a CP and they closed the doors as soon as I got there. And I was like, oh, oh. and so I went to Aurora Grandy Bakery and bought a half dozen of <laughs> chocolate cupcakes. And I was so excited. And I was sitting there all feeling sorry for myself, just looking at the box in my car. And the client that canceled called me and said, can we go look at three others? And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> so um, anyway, we had, uh, he was still on board. He just hated the house that we were in escrow on. He didn't, the, the day that we had our home inspection, he hated the house and decided to cancel, unfortunately. So he's still well, on board. And that's super important to pay attention to also is like, yeah, when these deals do fall apart, it doesn't mean we lost the client. It right. just means that that deal didn't close. And so yeah. now we need to continue to work with that yeah. client and, you know, definitely acknowledge our feelings about it and everything and make sure that they're coming first and they're the priority. So that's, right. that's awesome. Exactly. Yeah. So um, as we've been talking about, if, if those of you that haven't yet, you should go follow, um, what, what is the Facebook page? Shift Pivot. Um, you, Stacey, what exactly is the name of that group again? I keep messing up. Do you know? Uh, if you go on Facebook and you, you just do a search for shift pivot, there's um, a, every day they're adding content about how to handle a, a shift, how to handle this market we're in. Um, and one of the things they constantly are talking about is doubling down on your activities and really making sure that um, you don't lose focus on the lead generation um, part of your business. And I think a really great, that's a good subway, a segue for us to get into talking to Terry and Paul about um, ways of generating business um, through some online tools. So um, uh, Terry, do you want to start us off? Yeah, I'll start first. Is that okay. cool, Paul? Yeah, of course. Okay. So mine's going to be pretty short and sweet. Oh, you know what? Real quick. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I meant to do this at the beginning and I forgot. Um, while we're doing this, guys, um, we want to make sure we're having really good content throughout uh, all of these meetings. So if you just have a random idea pop in your head about topics for the future, um, go ahead and in the chat box, just put idea, like tag it idea, and then put your idea for the topic. We will keep track of those ideas and then make sure that we start adding them to future uh, uh, conversations. All right. So sorry, Terry, I just wanted to get that. No, in. that's fine. Okay. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Terry McKay. I um, obviously work here at Keller Williams. I have been recently interviewing local business owners and or like home inspectors and a lender on Zoom. So that's what we're doing here. We're going, I'm going to show you how to have a Zoom call and then stream it live to Facebook. Unfortunately, I had some issues with streaming to YouTube, so I'm going to have to do that later for you guys. I will um, record that and then have Janae send it to everybody who's on this call. Is that okay? It's gonna happen. Um, if, if you're not a part of KW and you're comfortable with it, just post your email in the uh, chat so that we can make sure we get that to you. Yes, please. Okay, cool. So I'm now, I guess, going to share my screen. So. First things first is we all have to have Zoom, right? We all have Zoom. And I believe you can't have the free version. You need to pay. I think I have the lowest Our text version. messages are up. I don't know if you want that. Not that it's a big deal, but. Thank you. No, we don't want this, the text messages up. <laughs> um, so, okay, anyways, back to Zoom. So here we are at Zoom. You have to have the at least the $14.99 account. You can't stream if you're doing the free Zoom account. So um, here we go to my account right here. And then you're going to go to account management right here. Then we're going to go to account settings. And let me know if I need to go slow. We are recording this too, okay, so we'll be perfect. able to send it to everybody afterwards. Okay, fabulous. So then we are going to go here. Allow live stream meetings. So most of you might have this toggled off. So it looks like this. So you want to toggle it on and then have Facebook 
workplace by Facebook. I need to do some more research on this, but, and then YouTube, okay? So this is important because if you don't have this turned on, then you're not going to be able in your Zoom, um, your Zoom app, you're not going to be able to stream to go live on Facebook. So you have to have this done first. Next, I did a video to walk you through it because when we're on Zoom right now, I can't show you that settings on the toolbar. It doesn't let you do that. So I did a video for you guys. Can you see everyone? Yes. Okay, fabulous. So I'm joining with, and you're going here to more. I'm on Facebook. So you can share it on your timeline or you can share it on a friends, in a group, a page you manage. So I'm gonna do it on my timeline, but you have options. And so that's what it looks like. It's saying preparing live streaming preview. This is when you, your, your stomach, your, your throat's in your stomach a little bit, you get a little nervous. That's what it looks like. And then here you can say, hey, interviewing you know, John Smith with ABC appraisal company. You can tag John Smith right here. You can title your video, um, you know, John Smith interview, and then you go live. And I actually went live for this, you guys, just to give you the real effect. And then it says live on Facebook. So that's when you know you're live. Just doing a test for my friends. So I was live. And then to stop the live stream, you go back to the more button and say stop, and then you're not live anymore up there. How did I do? Good, Good job. job. Awesome. <clears throat> Any questions for my friends? I would like I would like to just say that I think it's um, like even just for me personally with your Zoom yesterday, um, I ended up hiring you know, the uh, fitness coach that Terry interviewed and uses. And I think that like those types of things um, are great value. And I've, I've watched like all, all of what you've done, Terry, on Zoom and the Facebook stuff is just, I mean, it's valuable. I think we all plug into it and see it. And um, I think the more of us that can do that kind of stuff and be able to share this and, and have the ability to know how to do it is step one um, and then doing it. So thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. I Terry, are you nervous? What's that? Are you nervous when you guys do that? And like, even when you and Melissa go live and had your, your conversation yesterday, which was so adorable, uh, or nice, not adorable. Um, I, uh, do you get nervous? I mean, I, cause I get nervous every time I'm, I'm nervous. I get nervous, like right when I hit the go live button and then I'm like, Ooh, and, and, and then it just, it just kind of goes away. It just goes away. I will say though, because I like to look good and that's important for me and I want the interview, the person who I'm interviewing to feel and look good too, we do a pre-interview. So I don't just hit go live, right? Like I'm giving them the questions. I can send you guys questions that I'm asking people. I got the questions from a, um, my, co my Tom Ferry coach. And so I give those questions to the person I'm interviewing a couple days in advance so that they can prepare and they don't feel like they're on the spot. And then I, before I hit record, I'm also recording the Zoom, you guys. You want to record the Zoom for people who aren't on Facebook, who aren't on Instagram, so that you can send it out to your database via email, MailChimp, Constant Contact, whatever that is. Okay. Um, so I'll, also I ask, you know, the interviewers, um, interviewees permission, if that's okay. Um, and then we do like a pre-interview. So I'll be like, hey, you know, Terry McKay, this is Chad Franco with C5 Fit. Um, Chad, tell us a little bit about yourself and then he'll, you know, go on and, and do that. But I always do a pre-interview, um, makes them feel better and it makes me feel better. And I think that's why the nerves go away, like, you know, a couple seconds after you hit go live. Yeah, I was actually about to ask you what the preparation looks like. So when you prepare, what would you say when you're going to do one of these Zoom calls, what would you say the amount of time you invest in preparing for it is? I'd say an hour. Yeah. 
That's what I was going to guess. Yeah. That sounds reasonable. Yeah. I um, and um, so, you know, we are all about systems and models. So what kind of systems and models are there in, in this for you? When, you? when you're doing Zoom calls, how do you kind of make it so that it's consistent and systematized? Sure. So I, um, I don't know if I've ever told you guys this, but I have snapshots of the most... Um, uh, the busiest times, like with the most traffic on Instagram and Facebook. So I'm, I'm strategic when I'm doing my interviews. Mm -hmm. I can send those to you guys too. I'm either doing it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Those are the most frequent, um, frequented times on Instagram and Facebook. So Wednesday and Friday is usually when I'm doing an interview. I already have next week interviews planned, right? So I already know who I'm interviewing next week. And my goal is to do two a week. I've, before the COVID-19 and this pandemic, I've, it's been on my bucket list to interview business owners and then people also in our industry. And now I have a ton of time on my hands to do this. And I think it's, you know, not only is it a brand awareness for myself and our team, the Keenan Carter Group, it's also getting that information out there to our community. And the more that we do this here in our collective in this group, the more educated the community is going to be on what happens. Yeah, and so obviously we want to have as much impact as possible with these videos. Um, do you have any tips for preparing ahead of time to make sure you get a good um, attendance rate? Yeah, so I realized that just um, yesterday. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start announcing a couple of days before who I'm interviewing and what the topic is so that they know to, hey, come on at noon, I'm interviewing John Smith with, you know, John Smith Insurance Agency. Um, and if, are there any questions that you have? Um, are, is there anything that you're concerned with? Let me know now and then we can address those during the live. I do have some people attending the live asking questions, which I love um, because I like that interaction. So moving forward, I'm definitely going to be promoting the interviews. Um, and I, this is just, I'm thinking about this as we go. Um, are, oh, sorry, my computer's doing something. Um, are you doing anything to tie in the person you're interviewing's sphere of influence? So are you doing anything to say, hey, here's a link if you want to share this or you know, anything like that so that they can invite their people too? Yeah. So um, yesterday I just started that. I interviewed Chad Franco again. I don't know if some of you saw it. He owns C5 Fit. So I was in a marketing class and they said that if you want to get the most attendees to your lives, you need to tag the person that you are interviewing, right? right. So on Instagram, I, he requested to be in my lives. So that means that everybody that's following him personally is going to get an alert on their phone, right? That says, hey, Chad's going live with Terry McKay Realtor, join in. And then he's, all of my people and my followers are going to get an alert that I'm going live with Chad, right? So then there's the double exposure. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Facebook, I tag him. So when I, and I had mentioned that in the video that I shared with you guys to tag the person that you are interviewing. Hopefully they have a Facebook mm -hmm. so that it goes to all of their followers too. That's awesome. I question? I yeah, you did perfectly. Um, I just want to share something that ties into this that I took away from family reunion. Um, Molly and I went to a class on uh, social media and one of my big takeaways on, from it was, um, they said when you're planning your marketing strategy, specifically through social media marketing, you want to think about what kind of story you want to tell to your people, right? So how do you want them to perceive you? And then you want to look at everything through that lens. So when we're talking about who you're going to be interviewing, right? The, the content you're putting out there is the story you're telling the people about who you are and who your sphere of influence is, who your tribe is essentially, right? And so um, you're telling that story about your community, you're telling that story about your business, your brand. Um, so keep that in mind when you're planning these things. How do you feel about that, Terry? 100%. Yeah, nope. I, I, I definitely agree. Um, I ha 
from this, you know, new pandemic, I was, I'm sure you guys know, I used to do million dollar Monday and I just didn't feel like that was appropriate right now. So I changed it up and I did mindset Monday and I cannot believe the, the feedback. I mean, it's like no, no one has ever responded that much to me in any of my posts. And so it's, it's been really helpful. And my brand and what I'm trying to promote to people is that I'm positive. Um, I want to help you and we're going to get through this. So. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Silver Somebody lining. Have it. Oh, sorry, say it again. I said there, it's the, I'm the silver lining in everything. Yes. Awesome. Well, does anybody have any questions for Terry? Is there anyone that I can help get going on the videos that they, they want to start doing? Hey, Terry. Yes. Can I ask a question? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I'm driving. Um, so if someone has, uh, if someone doesn't have an iPhone, like I tried to do one the other day and she didn't have an iPhone, she had an Android. So for some weird reason, it wouldn't go live. So I ended up just recording it and then posting it. Something that was, um, have you found that to be an issue? Um, I didn't find that to be an issue with an Android. I will say though that Krista yesterday, my interview um, with Chad, I could not go live yesterday. And I was thinking maybe it was, there was a lot of people zooming and trying to do live and it would just, you know, like the, the internet was just overloaded. So I recorded okay on zoom and posted it on facebook still you know okay yeah yeah okay so that's what i ended up doing i was just curious if you had, had come across that you know another thing you guys if you record your zoom so i took that interview and then i put it i sent it to the thousands of people in my database right and so that was kind of good too to record it and then be able to send it out that way Yep, that's what we do. Yeah. Cool. I didn't know if you mentioned that. I had to leave for a second, but. Oh no, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So I record yeah. all interviews so that we can send it out to our constant contact database because there's a lot Perfect. of people who aren't on social media. So we want them to, you know, see the value that we're bringing to. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. Good well, job. thank you, Terry. Thanks, you guys. Um, all right. So. Uh, the next topic we're going to chat about, um, Paul, you want to introduce yourself and, and just explain what you're going to be talking about? Sure. My name is Paul Swack here in Shell Beach with Keller Williams. And um, first, I just want to say, I think that like, I want to thank like Scott and I know um, Terry and, and Bobby, the people that kind of put this together. I think the conversation idea of doing all of this is something that, you know, we can really gain a lot out of. It's basically all of us trying to share with each other what are the things that we're doing and what's working. And so with that being said, um, I just wanna be clear that like, you know, I'm definitely not, I would say an expert in any of the stuff that I'm about to share with you. It's just stuff that I'm currently learning. And then I think I can provide some places to get more information on it as well that can probably help your business. But what I've, what I've done is um, I made a commitment about two and a half years ago where I spend a minimum of an hour a day, sometimes two or three, on YouTube marketing for real estate. And so I go through that. It's usually maybe like, you know, early in the morning or late at night, laying in bed watching YouTube videos. And uh, it's kind of embarrassing to say, but I wanted a lot out of my business and I wanted to be able to learn a lot and find out what's working, what's not working. And if you guys ever have a chance or have had a chance to go on YouTube and start looking at stuff, it just puts you down a rabbit hole of everything that's possible. And if you get watching and following people that are actively working and you know, their, their teams or their business is selling 300 to 1500 homes a year. Um, I just plugged into all of those things and people that I was trying to follow. And so, you know, I have a list of people that I could put together and we could send out like in a, in a Keller Williams email or something that um, would show you the people that I follow. But, um, I've just plugged into that. And so recently with the quarantine thing, I've kind of doubled down. So I'm doing like twice as much, um, trying to get better at certain things. And the one thing that I kept hearing about in the last, I would say like three or four months was this whole Google my business thing. 
And so I didn't know exactly what it meant. And I kept hearing it with everybody, every, every marketing thing I was on, it was all real estate based. And um, they, they call it GMB, just so if you start hearing it, which is Google My Business, which I just couldn't figure out what everybody was talking about. And so if you go online, so I'm gonna share my screen and then I'm gonna keep this conversation kind of going, but let me make sure here, um, screen one. Let me see, hold on one second. So I think if I share screen two, the Google My Business page now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this here that says Google My Business is what pops up. Let me actually drag this over here first. How did you get there? Oh. So yeah, let me, let, me, let me get there. So everybody can see this where it says top real estate agents in Pismo Beach? Yes. Okay. So if you go and Google and you Google something like this, what happens is there's this thing that comes up, which is called the top three. Okay. And so this is what's connected directly to Google maps. And that was my big thing of what coming back from, from this was people are getting ranked on this based on all the different, everything that we have online, Google pulls from. So what I'm going to share with you is going to help you get into the top three here. So, um, it, as you go into this and I click on more places, whenever this came up, so, so I'm not always number one on here. I think some of that has to do with like the cookies on my computer and it pulls me maybe quicker. But if you scroll down through here, you'll see all the different people that are on this and it goes through like probably four or five pages. And I was, I was nowhere to be found on this whole thing. And so within three weeks, I've been between one and five everywhere or different computers that I'll try to look it up to kind of see like how it's pulling and where I'm ranking on certain things. So um, what happens is if you click on this, will come up with like this little profile that pops up, okay? If this is the Google My Business um, profile, which you're gonna learn how to create. But what you do on here is your name needs to kind of match all of your platforms. So if you have a phone number, if you have an address or hours of operation, if that matches on every platform across the board, it, the algorithm within Google My Business pulls all of that stuff together and starts ranking you higher because Google values what you're doing for that business. So if your name is the same on Google, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all the other sites. So there's, um, there's a word for the name of it. And I can't think of it off the top of my head. If anybody knows it, jump in. But there's something called like, um, uh, I can't think of it where you can go in and basically like on all of those like white pages and hot frog and all these different profile links where you can just be online and have your name out there. Um, there's about 50 of them and it's free and you can sign up and put like SWAC real estate group, my address, my uh, phone number, all that stuff. And that adds more rankings into your Google my business page. Okay. So as I look at my Google, my business here, I have a calendar, a Calendly link, which allows somebody to schedule appointments off of here, which I don't get very many off of that, but by having it, Google ranks you higher. So it's one of the things that they look at to make sure that you just have it available. So by having that, whenever you go into your photos, your photos are a big piece of the puzzle. So your photos, which is weird about it, I wasn't really sure on exactly what they meant by optimizing photos, but whenever you save a photo to your computer, like it might save as like ABC one, two, three, four, and we all click save and then we put it on there. If I save my photo as um, real estate agent in Pismo Beach or whatever, it, it pulls actually how we save part of our photos as well. So you can use almost like how you save photos as SEO type of stuff, which I never did before, never knew before. But if I click on my photos, what they, what they wanted you to be able to do was try to put together like decent photos versus stuff that we might like put on Instagram. So I put like, you know, a few different like houses that I thought looked kind of nice. Um, I have like a Christmas party, um, different, different houses that I had sold in the neighborhood. Um, so as you go through that, 
want to be able to optimize the photos and have that on there. Um, the other thing that is really important is reviews. And here's the cool thing about Google is, and I'm just, I'm just now getting into more of this, but as you guys know, like if you sell a property on Zillow, you have to have actually sold a property and that person actually has to go in and look at the video or you can't get a review. With Google, it could be anybody. It could be your neighbor that says, Paul always answers questions for me whenever I ask him. So for you to be able to get 50 reviews on Google, literally could be done in a short amount of time. If you do that on Yelp, they'll take them all down because it's not actually being done the right way and they have an algorithm that doesn't allow multiple um, reviews done immediately. But on Google, they don't care. So, so your reviews that you can get are really, really gonna help you stand out. The other thing that you're gonna see on here is as you go through some of the reviews, um, you'll see like your little bio. So my little bio here says, real estate agents in Shell Beach where our office is located. So what the people that I follow are trying to tell you in your bio, don't give a real bio. You're kind of using this because it's a Google bio. The optimization of it really helps promote and pull what you're doing. So we service the Central Coast. Or you can say we service Paso Robles, Atascadero, San Luis Obispo, Pismo Beach, Arroyo Grande. So whenever you're servicing something and it's trying to pull the information out and somebody Googles Arroyo Grande, we still have a chance of popping up because we're trying to link photos, we're trying to link our bio, we're trying to link posts, we're trying to link all the different stuff to all the areas within what our Google My Business account is doing, okay? The other thing that you have is posts, just like you would have on a um, Facebook. So I created a post that was like, you know, what's your homework? Um, it comes up with something that would take them directly into um, our Boomtown website. Uh, there was like a photos that I put on here. Um, we had a little COVID situation, like update, um, a couple other pictures. But the more that you post like you would on Facebook, the more Google sees your activity and it starts to help your rankings. So there's that. The other big thing that you have, which I'm trying to see where it's at on here, um, reply to your comments, obviously, a lot of people know that. Uh, there is another section on here, which I'm not seeing right now, but you can be asked questions. So there's a spot on the Google My Business where somebody could pull up your name and it'll say, you know, ask a question. So just like you getting reviews, you want people to ask you questions. You want them to be able to say, um, you know, what do you think about the market or what are you doing in this situation? And then as you respond to that, as you're doing questions and answers, it really helps your ranking on there. So um, I'm gonna take you back now to the other screen. So this is the Google My Business page where on the left here, you can see it's your home, your post, your info. So like if I click on info, this is no different than any other type of profile or anything that you would come up with. Um, the couple of things that you wanna do is you wanna have real estate agency as your category and then you wanna have subcategories below that as well. Your address needs to match exactly, including commas, every single thing that you have online. So every, if I had sweet B spelt out S-U-I-T-T-E, I will not be pulling the same way that I would be pulling today. So Google actually just links exactly what you have. Um, your service areas, your hours of operation, the, it doesn't matter what your hours are, they just need to match across the board. Your phone number needs to match, your websites need to match, your appointment needs to be on there. The Calendly site is free, you can go on there and set up an account. Um, what your services are, you can put on there. Your bio is important to list the areas that we work and some key words that you want. We focus every day on providing the best service to our clients. Our goal is to continue to raise the bar in our industry. We have built our business and reputation by always putting our clients' best interest as our first priority. You can add more photos, um, reviews, messages, photos, all the stuff on the left-hand side really, really, really makes a difference. So going back to this, here's my, here's my challenge to all of us on the phone, which I think I might have lost to that other screen. Let me see. So here... If we all work together, like say we did things during this call, 
I know for a fact, I mean, we've got, so we've got Cornerstone, Pismo Beach Homestand is always in the top five. Every time I've ever looked at this since day one, um, Pismo Beach Homes is always one, two, three, four, five. Um, we have, let's see, as we go down, um, Keller Williams as a corporation is on here. Hagwood Homes is on there. Um, and then it's stopping me right there just based on the area that my map is actually looking at. What I can tell you is based on the area that you live in, if we all kind of work together or you reach out to me and I helped you set up your site, however you want to do it, I, based on what I've been able to do and what I think I know, I could have every single person in our office ranking on the top 15 and we would always be fluctuating between the top of all of that. Um, we're currently doing it with our, with our personal team right now to get everybody set up and doing the same thing. But I can tell you that the maps and the Google ranking based on anything that people are pulling up is, is definitely the first thing that people are getting on desktop or their cell phone. As you come down, it does give you the next links. You can go into Yelp, um, which you see, we have a lot of agents on there. Um, I always see uh, Crystal Lowry, Pismo Beach Homes, um, always in the top on that. Tiffany Hernandez, I see on there a lot. Um, you'll see Zillow comes up. So like, whenever you look at what's pulling from these areas, you need to then go in and make sure that you have stuff set up. So if home light is the second thing pulling, do you have a home light profile set up? Is it matching everything that your Google profile has set up? Is that matching everything you have on Instagram? And do you have your address on Instagram? So in your, in your profile, all of those little things, like you got to start understanding how the, how the ranking part of it is actually playing out for us in this you know, world that is kind of new to everybody in a sense. I mean, it has been for me recently, but um, there's so much that's constantly always changing with this stuff. Um, I'm gonna try to stop sharing my screen. How do I do that right here on the top? Um, so I think that as you go into trying to figure out like, you know, again, it comes back to like what you're trying to get out of your business or what you want, but, um, there's so much with this stuff and so many different ways to go about it that it takes a lot of time and energy that like we all get busy with other stuff and then you don't get back to it. What I can tell you is if you can put an hour a day into this during the next two weeks of quarantine, you would be totally fine and set up on all your platforms and everything would be done and you would have a different response and how people are contacting you. So any questions? Can you read the messages there? Did you see Terry's? How does it work when you have a hundred plus agents using the same business address? Um, I think it's still going to come back to how you're personally being pulled through everything. So if you have that business address as, you know, the Pismo Beach Association, you're pulling from all of your other stuff that you have, you know, I, I, I don't think it's going to be a, a, a big difference. I mean, if I look at, if I open up Pismo Beach Homes, even though I'm not sharing my screen anymore, they have a James Way address, but they're also promoting and branding Pismo Beach Homes on everything that they're on. And so that's the difference is that you see the people that know what, know how the branding side of it works. Chris, I see Crystal Lowry, Pismo Beach Homes, Tiffany, and I, and I, I see Terry and I do see Keenan Carter Group a lot. The funny thing to me is it's also the kind of the whole top of our our business model, our, our business at Keller Williams. So as you go through and just do all your own research, you'll constantly see the same people doing things and like, you know, obviously things work for them, right? So um, I don't think the address matters. I think the more people that probably are pulling that address, the more it's gonna help everybody. Cool, and so, and it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Facebook kind of cross-references this too, don't they? So, every single, so if you're using Yahoo, it's mm -hmm. different. But everything that Google is currently doing in the back end of Google is where all of this info is coming from. And um, I mean, if you go on YouTube and just type in uh, setting up Google My Business, there's also an app on your phone for Google My Business. So you can do all the postings, all the different stuff on your phone like you can on Facebook really, really easy. Um, there's, 
at least like 500 hours of info on YouTube of all of the details of how to optimize your photos, how to set this up, how to set that up. Um, there's, I mean, you could go into just, you could be on it all day long. Trust me, it can be a little overwhelming at times, but like, you know, for me, I want us to be able to be seen and, and, and get better at this kind of stuff and find out how it works because we're all busy with other stuff. And so it's hard to stay on top of, you know, these types of things. So um, yeah, hopefully that helps some people. And like I said, and I think Scott said earlier, like if, if, uh, if we have questions or, you know, different things or ideas that people want to spin off on, I think this group that we're doing on Thursdays should be kind of, you know, we've got so many great agents on here to share things with of what's working. And um, we should all utilize that and kind of come out of this. Our, our goal and my, my plan is that we come out of the, um, you know, pandemic stronger than we were going into it just because of what we're setting up and having this chance to reflect on things and really dial in your business so that, in my opinion, July, August, and September are going to be really, really busy. And we want to be prepared and out in front of not having to do these types of things during that time. Sure. So you may have touched on this already, but I want to get real specific. Why do you think it's important for an agent who maybe focuses all their business off of uh, SOI and referral business to still have a really high online ranking? I mean, why is that important for them? I don't, I don't think it's important for anybody that doesn't want to try to get the most out of their business. So if your goals are focused on building your business through your SOI and doing a handful of deals every year and that works for you. I think that that is perfect and you're winning and you should stay where you're at. And if you want to have big goals and we don't want to sell anything less than a hundred homes a year out of our office, I have to be on this stuff or I won't achieve my goals. So for me, it's just a difference of where, where you're at personally, what you want to achieve. All right. Do you see that um, chat from the, so it's different than claiming the business or address. Is, do you know the difference between that, Paul? So what happens is once you go into Google My Business, if you guys have never done it before, you're going to set up an account and then Google is going to mail you a postcard to your home. And that, that postcard is going to have like a digit um, number on it. And then you will get that number within three days. And then you have to take that and go into the Google My Business and verify that you got that and that you're a business owner. And so it's not a robot that's setting this stuff up. Um, but the minute that you set up your Google My Business, you have access to all the posting and doing all that stuff. It's not gonna be going and going live until you actually input in that postcard that you get from Google. Are you putting- oh, go Different than- than claiming the business at 350 James Way. Yes, the claiming, claiming the business address and stuff like that can be a little bit tricky on there. We're dealing with that because there's multiple agents using our address, um, but you can allow people to use the address, which is kind of the same thing. And basically it just comes back to, um, that's one of the you know like 10 key components that you need to have all matching up, but it doesn't affect it doesn't affect me with another agent. It wouldn't affect the Keller Williams um, brand with another agent or anybody else that's utilizing the same address. If, if Every anything, time I, I get, think it would help. When I get in my car to go to the office, it tells me I'm going to Veronica Benavides's office. And yeah. I don't know what, how that happened. Is that Google my business or is that, how did that happen? However your maps is set up is pulling her as multiple things that she has online so what she's done is she's gone out and put herself out there on multiple different sites with that same address and it's pulling up her info. Okay, Terry, did that answer all your questions? Uh, and also just to dig a little deeper, when we talk about AI, if it's in your phone, your phone actually an Apple or, or Google is using like, if you call certain people, it knows phone numbers that are in your phone and it cross-references that with uh, the online content as well. And it's more likely to suggest things that it thinks you're likely to, oh, it's very possible that if you're calling Veronica consistently, that your phone is seeing that, cross-referencing that with the maps and saying, hey, you're driving to Veronica's house. Does it matter if she called me or is it me calling her? Just time I, I, of communication. Yeah. yeah. And the thing, was, the thing with that also that whenever we all sign up for Facebook and you look in the privacy things and all those things that we don't read, 
if, if, if I went and spent, um, well, use like Shannon Bounty as an example, if I went on vacation with her for the next three days, all of her Facebook friends would be, <laughs> would be coming up in my feed because our phones have been close together for a certain amount of time, like physically close together. You now will be linked into all of her stuff. Oh. <laughs> so it's kind of creepy. The yep. San Luis Obispo office, when you Google that, it, it comes up Sansi something. On right, yeah. And yeah. it's been gone apparently for a long time. So how can we fix that? Say that again, I didn't really hear that. Google Google what? When you Google, I don't know her name, but it's Sansi Son something for the um San the Keller Williams San Luis Obispo office, it comes up her name, Sansi Conway or San Sons. Yeah, it's a, it's an algorithm thing. So because yeah. because uh, for a long time the San Luis office didn't claim their business page on Google, but Sansi had claimed the address first. Um, it, she gets priority because she's been at that address longer. Um, and so until something changes with that, um, we can't really change that. I think Claire Google. fixed it for a little for a little bit. Because it, um, it used to go to what's his name. Um, Craig Lossy. Yeah, and then he, yeah. Mine still says that when I look it up, it still says that. I used to be every time I get in the car in the morning saying, uh, so many minutes to go see Maurice one to Toya. And yeah. so <laughs> I changed it in my, um, in I guess my directions that 350 James Way was my office. So that now it says how many, how many minutes it gets, is to get to my office. Yeah. yeah tell What's that I'm going to go see you, Shannon. What? When I get into my car, it tells me I'm going to go so many more minutes to go to Shannon Bowdy's office. <laughs> oh, <yay. laughs> when I get in my car, it says so many minutes to in and out. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, real quick, um, I don't know. I had to respond to a couple of texts there, so I might have missed it. But did you talk about the feed in Google in the business page and how that works? The what? The feed. So it has something called yeah. the feed. You did. Yeah, it's okay. just like it's just like posting on Facebook, you know, like so we have a we're we're coming up with a new like team rule that you have to post every day to a platform. So like if I did one picture today or a video, there's like six platforms that we basically all need to be on every day, right? Which is like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um uh whatever, all the all the other stuff that comes up, right? Um the Google. Um so you got to go out and actually do that on the different sites. And, you know, from Facebook, you can, or from Instagram, you can do Facebook and then you can jump on LinkedIn and then go to Google and do all that. But if I, I mean, you just, you don't have to do it as consistently as those, but the more that you're doing stuff, the more you're being seen and recognized of what's going on. Um, what's most important is going around the internet so that all your stuff is the same and connected. You know what I mean? And that's the most important part is that it all matches you're out there doing stuff like I literally had a list of like 50 different sites and I can't like I said whatever that name is it's called like a contributor or a contribution or something it starts with a C that's all I know um, and and there's and it's uh, and and there's like 50 sites that you could go on you know that are basically like just sites of what info you have like that your Paul Swack at Swack Real Estate Group and Shell Beach address phone number website and that's it it's free to set up a site and you just go down the list and start putting your name out there and everything and the more you're on the higher you rank and so that's why i'm saying like if everybody that wanted to do this or wants to put the time into it everybody because we're on the central coast the average time to like get up in these rankings takes months i did it in two weeks because we just don't have people utilizing this so the more that we would utilize it it would be all keller williams the entire first page no one else is doing it. So um, Google, in my opinion, is where you need to be. And the reason I say that is just like the privacy stuff on Facebook, where you go in and you can do ads on Facebook and you cannot go into home ownership or all of that kind of stuff anymore. Google did not have those privacy settings and they still, you can still target people directly how you want on Google. So the more, rep, the more that you have online gives you the Google ranking and the more you can do on Google, I think you can get more results for it. 100% of our advertising budget today is in Google. Awesome. 
any other questions or anybody want to share any ahas, just things that they've learned today or that have made them think differently? I'm more than willing to sit here and stare at a screen of awesome people until somebody answers. <laughs> well, I just feel a little overwhelmed. Anybody else think that this sounds a little overwhelming? A little bit. Yeah, the the Google stuff, but thankfully we my team has Moe. So thank you, Moe, for helping us. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, so when you you is there somewhere you find that list of fifty sites that we need to go in and change everything in? And um, like so if there's a step by step video that you saw that got you, you know, really capitalizing yeah. on this. So I think what I can do, Stacy, is like send you an email of the people that I'm following for this and some of those little things, and then you can send it out to everybody. Because yeah. um, I don't have it, I, I didn't, I wasn't fully prepared for all of that. Um, but uh, I can tell you if you guys want to give me a second, if Scott, if you want to take over something else, I can tell you the one guy that I really like on YouTube. Um, give me one second. And he has like a class of like four, um, it's like four videos on Google My Business. And his name is, while Paul's uh, figuring that out, I do want to throw out there that um, one of the things I've noticed with Google and Facebook is they're constantly updating and changing the way that like the algorithms work and all of this stuff. And so it's awesome to get it started and you kind of have to keep track of what they're doing too, because as technology changes, like for a long time, video was not the priority uh, photos were, and then it jumped to video and then it jumped back to photos. And I mean, there's a lot of different things. Uh, Google, my business used to be places and then it turned into my business. So, there's a lot of stuff like that that just kind of jumps around. Um, and YouTube for me as well has always been the place to go to learn about that stuff. And it's really easy just to type, you just type in a search in the search bar, you know, Google my business, uh, you know, rankings or, you know, and then you'll start finding things that give you tips and tricks on how to grow it. Um, so and then the other thing real quick I want to throw in there, make sure that you're abiding by um, marketing standards and stuff like that. So the way the branding requirements are with Keller Williams or your brokerage, whatever your guidelines are. Um, Google, my business, I don't think is one that we've really looked at before on the brokerage side of making sure that everybody's in compliance. So I have a feeling we'll be hearing from Tony to make sure that everybody has guidelines of you know where license numbers should go, brokerage name and all that. Because that's not a Keller Williams thing, that's a state uh, department of real estate thing. And we have to make sure everybody's in compliance. So look, keep so an eye Scott, out. To add on. I have a one question. Oh, go hey, ahead. Scott? Yeah. Hey, um, so the, this is Dave Freezing. Hey, uh, so the address then, is that part of the requirements? So yes. if I do Google My Business and my Google My Business is, the, and I use Keller Williams address 350 uh, James Way. It must is be. Is that still must be any of the registered addresses that we have with the Department of Real Estate. So the Department of Real Estate currently has the Morro Bay office, the San Luis office, and the Pismo Beach office. Am I and those have to be in the Google My Business page. So my business page has to have that address on it. One of those three, yeah. Yeah, if you try to use like a home okay. office or a home address, something like that, um, it's technically a violation because you're not supposed to be meeting clients at that address. You're supposed to be you know, okay. Perfect. Department of real estate wants everything. I haven't done that. Match it. So I have not done that. So that makes me happy. And I, yeah, it's, you know, I started, I actually did this Google my business several months ago and I've been struggling with it. It's yeah. been a nightmare for me. And, and just a reminder, this so, is, a, so if you want to go back and watch what Paul has talked about, um, you know, and just kind of pause and go through it. Um, that's gonna. Oh be no, I've been listening the whole time. Good. Um, all right, Paul, did you find your links? Yeah. Thank so you. just just so you guys know, the one guy that I really like, and like I said, there's, um, I have 46 subscriptions that I follow on YouTube for real estate marketing. This guy, it's it's not his name. It's called Mind Saw, all one word, M I N D S A W. 
and it's all about how to pop up in the top of Google and how to understand Google My Business, SEO. Um, he's easy to understand, he's great. You can pause the video and just go through step by step. I mean, I've prob I was just looking at the front of his uh, like first videos. I think I'm in like six hours right now with just him. And so it's, I mean, there's just so much there. And, and like, whenever you say you're feeling overwhelmed, that's exactly how I felt. And so what I did was I watched another hour and another hour and another hour until I figured it out. And so, like I said, that might not be for everybody and I totally get that, but I do feel that there's a lot of value in it. And I do feel that, you know, based on what you're trying to accomplish, um, these overwhelming things are, are what will really help. Can you say it? I name? wasn't asking for myself. I was asking for others. I, <laughs> I watched my share of YouTube for sure. Paul, what was his name again? Or the my, it's, it's one word, mind saw, M I N D S A W. Okay, cool. Thank you. One more time. What's that? Mind saw. I'm going to put it in the comments. Unless, so it's, it's uh, yeah, somebody, somebody put it in there. So yeah, mind saw, just like it's typed in the chat. M I N D S A W. He's great. Awesome. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, we're at 202. Um, and I just want to remind you if you have any ideas for future conversations that you'd like to have, topics, things you'd like to learn, um, you can either you know post them now in the Zoom chat or go ahead and um, post them on the Facebook group or email them to myself or Paul. Um, any of those will work. So uh, yeah, we'd love to get some future conversations going, um, get, get some ideas rolling there as well. Do you guys want to add anything, Paul, Stacy, any of you guys? I think we should just open it up to anybody that might have a question or maybe a comment about something for next week that we want to talk about or anything that is on anybody's mind with that for the last couple minutes? Nobody? All right. I think we are probably good to call it a show then. I just uh, want to say one thing. Go ahead. Here's the story. <laughs> Go, Shannon. Go, Shannon. You're supposed to sing it for us, Shannon. Like my mother. Who's, the youngest Who's going to host these? Girls. So anyway, because we have this set up, I had to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> who's going who's to host the after party for Zoom after party? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, as we Thanks for all the info, guys. That was great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, as Paul, Paul Terry said, reach out to them if you guys have more questions about their topic. Um, I think we've all said that we're willing to spend, you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes to go over stuff with you if you need help. So what, what about setting up your YouTube channels? Everyone's YouTube channels set up. Could we do a, a dive a little deeper on that and kind of make YouTube that's, our That's bitch? a great suggestion. Yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at that and see who maybe somebody we could talk to about it. Sounds good. Perfect. I also think we should try to add in, uh, if we get some feedback from everybody over the next week, I think like doing a goals like mindset for like most of the conversation is a big, big part of where things will be at. I think like, I think Bobby, Bobby could do a good one for that. I'm going to recommend her. All right. Terry, do you feel better? Yes, I do. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Terry. Oh, it's fine. Well, I do think that there there is something to, to kind of vent it, get it off your, you know, write it down, get it out of your way, and then move on. So yep. it's, a, it's a good sure. one. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Love you. Love I you. want to throw one more thing in there real quick, if that's okay. I was just thinking about it. Um, somebody on Facebook the other day asked, and this has nothing to do with you, Christian. Um, somebody on the other day asked if... Uh, they had one thing that they can just one thing, like not a long list, just one number one thing that you could say to a brand new licensee that would be a great tip to help them have a really successful business. What would it be? And the second part to that is, you know, really think about that. Second part of that is, is are you using that in your business? 
So if it's something that you're telling them, like, here's what you should implement, here's how you should run your business, and then really reflect on that for yourself in your business, is that something that you're doing? Because if we're going to give somebody else that advice, we should take it ourselves as well. I just watched a Kevin Ward video and it said basically commit. So either you're either going to stick in this business and really go for it and burn the ship and uh, really commit to doing it or get out because, you know, that that will mess up your mindset you know, every day, you know, do I stay into the business? Do I get out? Do I keep going or what do I do? And that was, I just listened to that one this morning. So I thought that was huge. Awesome. I would say, cons I would say consistency. It's kind of what Paul was saying, be consistent across the board with all your um, marketing. And, you know, when someone Googles your name, you want to look the same on every platform. I mean, not the same, but you want, you want to have the same information on every platform and you want to be easily accessible. So when you're consistent, you're easily accessible. And I think that's key. Yes. I would say making calls, whether that be your sphere of influence or if you don't have a sphere of influence, then um, call business to business. If you don't want to do that, then or you could be doing all of this um, and cold calling, um, just listed, just sold. So I would be consistent. My, mine has been implementation. Uh, it's really easy in the real estate world to get distracted by training and not ever take action. So yeah. uh, I think everybody here could probably agree with the fact that like you could spend a million dollars in your first month on real estate, on training and coaching and on everything else, right? Uh, Zillow is going to call you like crazy trying to sell you leads. Realtor.com is going to sell you leads, right? And you could spend a ton of money on all that, but if you don't implement, then none of that's going to do you any good. So find something that you really want to implement and focus on that and put it in action before you move on to the next thing. So if Zillow and Realtor.com have not been calling me, am I doing something wrong or something oh, right? They will. They will. They're their radar. Oh my gosh. We've talked about that the question of, yeah. you know, my thoughts on Zillow leads. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think it's just a matter of time. Um, I think they're a little distracted right now by some stuff they've got going on, but yeah. Um, yeah. I have there's one more thing, Scott, to share maybe, or we can talk about it next week. Uh, uh, we're going to leave a cliffhanger. We can leave a cliffhanger. So what we have is we've developed a, um, a five-step system of how we run our business every morning. And me and Megan, who works directly with me as an assistant for the last year, we have a five-step process that we put together that is five simple things that we do that make sure that we're running our business the right way and getting everything done. And uh, I could go over that next week or it would take three minutes now. So we can wait, whatever you guys want to do. Let's, uh, we're headed into about 10 minutes over. So let's, let's save it for next week and you and I can kind of strategize on that. Sounds good. Awesome guys. Well, thank you. We also lost some Bye. people that left early or so I don't want to have them miss it. Sounds good. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I look forward to next week. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.